you to stand as you are able for hymn number 494. Hymn number 494. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together the Gloria.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Uh, at this time, I apologize. The readings you have in front of you are not the correct one. And so uh, I'm going to be reading the prayer for the collect for today, which is the Feast of the Ascension. What you have in front of you won't be that. So um, I just wanted to let you know. <clears throat> Almighty God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to perceive that according to his promise, he abides with his church on earth, even to the end of the ages. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for in everlasting glory. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> The readings also won't overlap, if that's obvious as well. <laughs> so we are still reading from the book of Acts, but it's a different one than you have in your, re in your insert. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me Psalm 93, which can be found on page 722 of the Red uh, Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 93, responsible, responsively by half verse. The Lord is king. He is put on splendid apparel. The Lord. He has made the whole world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their condemnation. 
mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. Mightier is the Lord of us. Your testimonies are very sure. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. I invite you to stand as you are able and join us in hymn number 484. <laughs>
Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up to heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, for they were continually in the temple blessing God the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. shouting because y'all are awake so my goodness all right well uh first things first we ha thank you to reverend david who is visiting with us on making his wife uh and so gallantly offered uh i asked him and he and he accepted to read the gospel so thank you david um with david here with paul here with susan here we've got more retired clergy i feel like we're like a cathedral we can finally match toe to toe with all of those big name places in texas that might have like 10 or 15 retired clergy too yeah all right um okay but so as you may recall uh but I talked about the book of Acts being a really important book of the Bible. Um, not just for our churches here in Vermont, but actually for the whole church. This whole current status of the Jesus movement in this ever-growing, ever-expanding, secular culture. This non-Christian culture that seems to not just exist, but grow. And so I said the reason that the book of Acts was so important is because it highlights how the faithful, how they flourished in a world where people didn't believe like them. Now, as a parish uh, and as a constellation, we've, we've started to low-key begin to weave the book of Acts into various ways over the past six months. Um, the most obvious way being when Susan and Vicki from St. Peter's did the Book of Acts Bible study. But the reason I'm making such a big deal about it, <clears throat> a big deal about it today is because this Sunday, we are celebrating the Feast of Christ's Ascension. And so we recount the moment where Jesus gave his last instructions, told us how we would carry them out, and then ascended into heaven aka leaving us to do the work. Now, as a side note, right, as storytellers go, Luke is actually a pretty amazing storyteller. He ends season one of the Jesus movement with the instructions Jesus gives to his disciples. He, Jesus says that we are to proclaim repentance and pardon. 
and without telling us how. Luke says, he blesses the people and ascends into heaven. That is a cliffhanger. <laughs> how are we supposed to proclaim repentance, which is the actual word, right, metanoah, uh, which means a changing of hearts. I think the, a lot of stereotyp, uh, stereotyping of what repentance has meaning is not what it really means, right? It's not the stereotype of you're bad, do things different. It's have a change of heart. So how are we supposed to change hearts? And how are we supposed to proclaim being pardoned, which the word is actually a thesis, uh, which is a releasing of all of that negative sin, that stuff that separates you from the divine. Again, the stereotype being you are wrong and you need to do better and you stink. And really it means take that weight off of yourself. Take those chains off of yourself and be released from the things that hold you back. So how are we supposed to do these very miraculous things? And if you don't think they're miraculous, you go back to the book of Exodus and the, and, and the very first changing of hearts that you hear in the entire Bible is actually when God hardens Pharaoh's heart. So the first time you're thinking about the changing of hearts, it is a divine action. So this is very miraculous to change someone's heart, right? And instead of answering that question, Luke just leaves it with Theophilus. That's who he's written it to. Until he writes season two, of course. And then he starts season two of the Jesus Movement, AKA the Acts of the Apostles, by taking us right back there to that moment when Jesus blessed us and then left and then, except this time, we get the how. And so Luke picks up season two with this quick recap of the Jesus Movement. And he says, our hero Jesus rose from the dead and performed very, uh, many miracles. And then he gave this call to action, and then he blessed that, blessed them. And y'all know that already. And so here is the blessing. Now, church, there are so many lessons wrapped up in this ascension story that it's hard to stick to just one. We could talk for days about the allegory, about not knowing the divine, what the divine reveals to us. We could talk about the journey versus the destination. We could talk about all the ways God teaches us. But if you're like me and you're like, I just want to know the answer. Like you said this the first time, I want you to close the gap. I want you to close the cliffhanger. Luke does that. Acts chapter one, verse eight, he says, and you will receive power by the Holy Spirit and you will be my witnesses to the rest of the world. Not just any power, dynamin, inherent power. And where does that power come from? The pneumatos, the breath of God that we hear about in the very beginning of Genesis. In Hebrew, you might recognize the word as ruach, that same breath that divided the waters of chaos, separating the earth from the sky, that is what will come to bestow this power upon you. And then when that happens, and I, I'm not a Greek scholar, so if I pronounce this wrong, I'm, I don't really care if I pronounce it wrong, but I kind of care. Um, <laughs> Esethe mau martyrs. We will be his martyrs his witnesses to the rest of the earth. So let me pause and ask you this question. How much do you believe in yourselves? How much do you believe in the ability of you to be transformed? And I don't mean physically or financially. I mean spiritually. I mean emotionally. I mean in here in a changing of your own heart. Unless you're the most egotistical person on this planet, that realization that God just mass drafted everyone in earshot, and now you, everyone who this story is retold to, there is a fear of being worthy of that call. The divine, right, 
if you are, if, if, if you, putting yourselves in that place, <clears throat> you've been following this guy, you kind of questioned him, but you were like, you know what, he's got a really good message. And then he dies, and you're like, okay, that, that guy's not the guy. And then he comes back, and you're like, oh, that is the guy. Um, okay, cool, that is definitely the guy. Uh, and then you're like following him some more, and then he's like li literally ascending into heaven. You're like, that is most definitely the guy. That is most definitely the guy right there. And as he's going up, he's like, I'm going to invoke a blessing on you that is so ancient that it was oral mythic stories to our forebears, right? Genesis is one book, but accounts for more galactic time than any other book of the Bible. We're talking about creation, we're talking about Ice Age, we're talking, I mean, like, we're talking about all of that. And in that, we're talking about the breath of God, the changing of hearts, the bestowing of responsibility. That is the level of cosmic power that God is sort of saying, okay, I gotta go, but by the way, you can do that, bye. Huh? Excuse me? I, I didn't, I, oh, you're gone. And then, and then, leaving them in shock, he says that they're looking up, two angels come down, and they're like, no, no, seriously, what are you guys still doing here? Go. They don't even get time to like sit with the reality of it before being told to move on. One of my favorite memes is a cartoon of the ascension. And it, there are lots of different quotes about it uh, in terms of like what you put in the Jesus bubble. And it's usually like, uh, command, uh, love thy neighbor, or some kind of bestowing of universal goodness that he says. And then the characters are like, but what about these people? But what about this thing? But what about that thing? And then Jesus always responds with, did I stutter? <laughs> Right? Like, there is no back and forth with God. That's not how that works. And when, when you do get back and forth with God in Job, right? We'll talk about the ultimate back and forth. That's when God gets real serious and goes, I'm sorry, Job. Did you create the universe? No, I didn't think so. Did you separate the waters from Cain? No, I didn't think so. Don't question me. And so, that level of responsibility, that level of power, that level of direction says, go forth and do these things, and I will bestow these things upon you. Now, I've read the Bible. You have read the Bible. There are story after story about God's messengers, and they're called prophets. We have whole books of them, scores of scriptures, big names like Isaiah and Jeremiah, to lesser known names like Amos, Habakkuk, and Haggai. But these were people God singularly individually singled out and chose. He, he, he proverbially knighted a single one of them at a time, right? We have a whole book about Jonah's journey being, I mean, it's not, it's a book, but it's like a page and a half or whatever. But like Jonah being like, not me. And he's like, yes, you. And he's like, not me. And he's like, swallowed by a fish. And he's like, not me. Are you finally me? And they're like, but like the point is, we get stories about how the individual is chosen. And right now, all of you have been drafted. We don't get a whole book about it. You get one verse that all of you were drafted. You don't even get a paragraph. Now, you might say to me, Father Jeremy, you say God is consistent. This doesn't feel that consistent. I preach about consistency in God. That that's how you know it's God, right? Like I've said that week after week. How do you know it's God? God is consistent. And so you would say, uh, if he's been doing individual knighthood and we all got drafted into, the, into King Arthur's table, how is that consistent? And I would say, actually, it is. It's consistent with the same part of the Bible that Jesus is referring to when he's talking about the bestowing of this power. Back in the book of Genesis, God breathed life and existence into humankind and then universally drafted every single one of us, all of them, 
and all of us at the same time to care for God's creation. God is not above knighting everybody at the same time. He did, it was the first thing he did when we were brought into action. The priesthood part was after that. The prophethood part was after that. The universal drafting, everyone's got a responsibility. That was the first thing we got, all of us. So it is actually consistent. So my question to you then is if this is God being consistent, at what point are you going to believe in God's transformative power within you? When are you going to accept that unconditional love and blessing and then be willing to put yourself out there to share his love and his blessings with the world? If today's readings tell us anything, it's that the world out there is thinking in terms of single battlefields, single issues. I, got an I, I took an entire shower while they were talking about the debt ceiling. Single issues. Now, it, it's, a, it's a really important issue. I'm not trying to like bash politics or, or the news or the debt ceiling. I'm not saying that. But my point is the world out there is talking about singular stuff. And God is planning whole campaigns. God is not in the single, I mean, he is, but we're talking about God is in swath campaigns, right? Love God and love neighbor. That's a campaign. Bestow a changing of hearts. That is a campaign. Help release everyone from being a prisoner to their own fears, their own sense. That is a campaign. Today, more than any other day, let this be a prophecy over your life. Now, I was, I was writing that line and I was thinking to myself, Susan is going to square me and be like, but Jeremy, you just said your favorite holiday was Pentecost. I knew she was going to think that. And so I, that's why I was very specific. Today is the prophecy of the point, right? And then P Pentecost is that go do it. It has been bestowed. Get them moving. Is that okay, Susan? Do I feel like I've nuanced that? All right. All right. Cool. All right. <laughs> May you remember that you are so uniquely wonderful that God has already bestowed upon you a blessing, that you are a transformation waiting to be released. It happened at your baptism. It happened at your confirmation. It happens when you take in the Eucharist. It happens when you release yourself in your confessions and penitence. It happens over and over and over again in places and spaces you can't begin to count. That power and that grace of God, it invites you over and over and again, endowing you with the same breath, that same breath that separated the waters of chaos, that same breath gives you courage. It gives you confidence to love and share those stories of transformation and hope with the rest of the world. On this Feast of the Ascension, don't just focus on it being Jesus' ascension into heaven. Remember, it's the anniversary of you being given a vision and a mission for the whole world. I'll leave you with this anecdote. When you think of all of those Wild West uh, movies and stories, now I think of when Fievel goes west, the little mouseketeer, but I'm sure there are other ones, like I'm sure Clint Eastwood, Clint Eastwood went off into the West a bunch of times or whatever. But like, into the sunset, the underlying principle of that, the underlying thing in that going off in the sunset is that then it was the responsibility of the people left behind to carry it forward. That that person went off into the sunset because they believed enough in the people being left behind that they could do it. Otherwise, that person wouldn't go off into the sunset because they would still have work to do. Jesus has literally gone off into the sunset. And you all have been deputized as sheriff. Amen.
I invite you to stand as you are able, that we might recite the Nicene Creed together. Uh, the Creed is available to you in our bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of the name, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was in part of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified in a conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. I invite you to a prayer for a position for, for the, prayers the prayers of the people. Insert in, in your bulletin is the page you want. In baptism, we are joined by the Holy Spirit to be the body of Christ. At his ascension, Jesus told the disciples they would be united with him as his witnesses to the ends of the earth. Empower us to be his witnesses in our world for the love of the world. In baptism and ordination, our leaders in faith are also enriched by Jesus' presence to be our pastors and teachers. We hold up Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Shannon, our bishop, Father Jeremy, and all clergy whose support provides enrichment to our constellation. Empower them to bear witness to his love and their leadership and ministry. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we lift up the clergy and people in the Pro Church of the Province of the West Indies, Howard K.A. Gregory, Archbishop. In the Vermont cycle of prayer, we pray for the people of Zion Church, Manchester, and David Fredrickson, Rector. We also raise up the Diocese of Haiti, Puerto Rico, and all other distressed communities within our Episcopal Communion. Empower them to be his witnesses in the growth of his kingdom of love. In our world, so damaged by exploitation, war, and people's violence against one another. Empower us to speak out for restoration, work for peace, and demonstrate forgiveness and healing. In our towns and counties, we see the suffering of addiction, being unhoused, and the inability to access health care. Empower us to work for solutions, not band-aids, that our communities will grow to health and wholeness. In our faith community here at St. James, empower us to be open to the movement of the Spirit, that we will open to change in our customs, embrace growth in our understanding, and welcome the new as a flowering of the old. Empowered by our faith in your presence, Lord, we pray for all who are unwell in body, mind, or spirit. We lift up especially David Danahar and his family, Andy and Susan Nagel, Marion Sibley, Wilfred Williamson, Jim Avery, Jill Carrigan, Gus Scott, and Esther, and any others you would like to name now. Jane Maria. 
podcast. We pray, also pray for Phil Harron, Dot Whitley, John Steele, and Kelly and Sean Mallon. Reach their spirits, Lord, that they know your healing presence in their distress, discomfort, and problems. Empowered by our faith in your welcoming, Lord, we lift up all those who have died, especially Larry Wojak, Jason Reese, and Marty Zobel, and any others you name now. May we be welcomed into your kingdom, Lord, and rejoice in being your eternal presence. Loving God, help us to see through the anxieties in our days to share your forgiveness and healing with all. Open us to embrace the reality of the oneness you make real in your incarnate self, Jesus our Lord. Amen. God, may you hear all things said and all things left unsaid. Amen. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, hero Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. The second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Uh, you beautiful and wonderful. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. Hymn number 518. Hymn number 518. Thank you, Gail. 518.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, source of all being, incarnate Word and Holy Spirit, bestow upon you a confidence to know that you are loved, a transformation to take you to those places that you dared not dream, and a breath inspiring you to separate all chaos. Amen. You may be seated or relaxing in your seatments because <clears throat> we have a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, so, uh, as you have seen in the shell, we are asking for emergency contact information. Um, some of us have the joy of sprawling families uh, who know what to do if something happens. Some of us do not. And so just out of, out of a, a space and place of care for all, we're asking that you give us your emergency contact info. Um, what to do if something happens and how to support you in that process. And so there are uh, pieces of paper uh, in the back, the, are they in the, they're in the narthex. Chris Straffen, our senior warden, is uh, sergeant in arms to make sure that you fill them out. Um, that's a military reference for all of you who know who, who yeah. Um, anyway, it's also in the shell, so you can fill it out online or uh, with Chris. We also, as a parish, a parish is more than just the people in these walls. We support our community. Uh, and so uh, the Pike family suffered uh, a, a fire, as you know, it was in the news, or they may have told you or someone may have told you, and so they suffered a lot of uh, personal loss in terms of material belongings and things like that. And so we as a community are trying to help them. Um, and so if you could offer a little bit uh, today to go, it would go toward directly to them. And that basket is um, in the back. It, in the back or in the narthex? In the narthex, it's in the narthex. It's labeled in the narthex, um, but it's back there. So this is just a, another way. Um, and you can also do an online give and just put in the memo that's a special offering for them uh, if you use the online methods. Uh, this is another reminder that as we get closer and closer to Pentecost, we will go back to passing the plate. Um, the offering plate will be passed. Uh, and part of that is because we'll be adding a routine into that passing of the plate where you put in a token. Um, the token will be made and given for everyone and available for everyone. You don't, it, it'll be available to you. Um, and the, the science, the methodology, the research behind this is that as a people, we forget that offering is more than just money. It is a release of the self into the altar. It is a saying, I have something. No matter what I have, I have something. It could be a prayer. It could be a volunteering of time. It could be a vulnerability. And it could be money. But there is, an, there is an importance in the act of putting it in the plate and watching that plate come on the altar and part and seeing what you gave of yourself to give unto God. And so we're bringing that back to the church. And I don't get credit for it. It was a, a very esteemed professor of mine who shared that other communities do it. And I was like, that sounds like a gangbusters idea. So I don't get credit for it. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Um, we will also be changing the piece up because if we didn't alter the language of the piece a little bit, it would just become rote memorization the way the old phrase had, right? And so as we enter the season of Pentecost, that phrase will change to, I greet the Holy Spirit within you. I greet the Holy Spirit within you. And then halfway through Pentecost, or the season after Pentecost, I'm so, so surprised you didn't call me out on that. I call people out on that all the time. So the season after Pentecost, after that, uh, we'll change it a little bit because the season after Pentecost is a, is a long season. Um, 
One, I'm going to end with a piece of good news. Our very own Ed Gust uh, is now nicely settled into Bromley Manor in Manchester. And so, yay! Okay. Uh, so go visit, go say hello. He has some good days, he has some not as good days, but you know what? Go visit, go say hello. Um, I know that if I were changing communities, I would love a visit every now and then. Uh, so go visit him in Bromley. Oh, and the community dinner, thank you. The last piece is another piece of good news, right? Uh, the Lions Club is hosting, sponsoring this month's community dinner. Uh, it's gonna be Friday, May 26th, starting at five, right here. Um, do we recall who they're offering us supporting? The summer lunch program. Awesome. Sweet. Okay. Invite you to stand as you're able for our final hymn of the morning. Hymn number 711. 711. Oh, thank heaven. Okay.